So, uh, Please go ahead with the. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a great pleasure uh, to visit here at the Trieste and ICTP. And uh, this talk contains some of the latest development of our recent efforts for improving uh, the one year uh, algorithms for finding one year functions. And uh, this is uh, pretty up to date, which has appeared on archive yesterday. But uh, there is a hidden treasure in the talk, which is even more up to date, that was updated like uh, 10 minutes ago. So, <laughs> and uh, uh, so first of all, I don't think to this audience I need to talk about much about the one-year functions. Uh, now the Mazari Vanderbilt construction for the MLWF has become the standard, and this is two examples: one from silicon, one from the graphene. Uh, and uh, there is a lot of uh, mathematical reasoning for the existence of exponentially localized one-year functions, at least for insulating systems, but uh, more recently extending to the understanding of uh, uh, existing existence of one-year functions for topological materials, which I won't discuss here today. Uh, and one-year functions are very useful. Uh, here only a very incomplete list for uh, doing, using one-year functions, such as uh, the analysis of a chemical bonding, the band structure interpolation, uh, you want to construct the basis functions for the occupied orbitals, or the basis functions for excited state calculations, uh, which is to represent the hard mode product or the pair product of the orbitals. You can do it for strongly correlated systems, phonon calculation, etc., and etc. So uh, it is a very useful thing. Uh, mathematically, how do you construct these one-year functions? You first do a Kumshan calculation. You get your Kumshan orbitals called the Psi, and you would like to find a gauge which is obtained, uh, which is called the U. U is a unitary matrix, uh, and it is called a gauge because uh, irrelevant to degrees of freedom, it does not affect the density matrix and the other physical observables. And you find this by minimizing the spread functional or the second moment of the localized orbitals. Here. I highlight the word intuition here because later you will see that this is actually not taken for granted that this is always the best thing you do. And, uh, uh, but nonetheless, the standard way to do it is to minimize the spread, and this is, you can see, like a variance thing. This is the second order moment, this is the first order moment in subtract, and uh, you minimize this phi, but what you're minimi really minimizing is with respect to you, and that is the gauge degrees of freedom. Once you have achieved the minimizer, and this is the corresponding spread, and this, uh, uh, this uh, phi, what you obtain there is uh, the localized orbitals. So uh, robustness issue has been consistently observed in this community for various kind of systems. Actually, robustness can be uh, interpreted from two directions, and one is the so-called initialization problem. That is, the previous uh, optimization problem is highly nonlinear, and it is entirely possible to get stuck at the local minima if the initial uh, starting point is not correct. And the second is the uh, robustness with respect to the band gap. That that is the case of the entangled band, which I'm going to talk about today. And uh, if you directly do uh, uh, the localization for the entangled uh, uh, banded system, it won't work directly, and you have to generalize these one-year functions. But the generalization is not unique. How do you do that? Uh, and uh, in practice, people observed in the case of entangled band, it becomes more challenging to tune these parameters. And both needs to be addressed uh, for high throughput computation because this is not, uh, if you rely on the expert doing that for one or two systems, that's probably fine. But if you want to do it for screening with 10,000 materials, you want some methods that works more robustly. And this is a recent example uh, obtained uh, uh, just uh, hours ago <laughs> from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, Roberto's current student, Lucas uh, Amukler. And uh, he, uh, we had some joint work but before. He also worked with Roberto on a new topological insulator called tungsten ditelluride. And it's a monolayer system, uh, a lot of interesting properties. And this is a unit cell of that. Uh, the thing I want to show is he actually spent weeks 
uh, tuning the parameters so that you can get the one-year functions for this system. In the end, he actually has to resort to the help of experts in Professor Mazzari's group, and in the end, he obtained this begin projections thing. What it does is to exactly uh, put the localized orbitals on some bonds, I mean, and along some directions. If this is what you need, you can see that this is not very friendly for the high throughput calculations. Now, if you run the new developer version of the one year uh, 90 code, thanks to the development of uh, uh, Dr. Vitali sitting in the audience, and uh, all you need to do is this, and it becomes much easier to tune. And the talk contains two parts, and the first is uh, the stuff we did in the past few years called the selected columns of the density matrix, and we're gonna talk about that, and the second part I'll talk about the recent variational formulation. So what is SCDM? The basic idea is that you have the Psi uh, is a unitary matrix, and then P is equals to Psi Psi star, and this is the density matrix, it is a projection operator. Clearly, it is a gauge invariant in the sense that if you choose any U, and uh, you can see that U, U star exactly cancels, and you have the phi, phi star. Remember, phi is the localized orbital, which means that P is the sparse matrix. And at least it is close to a sparse matrix, and this is a simple example for a model 1D system. And the basic idea of the SCDM approach is, uh, okay, it is kind of hard to find phi directly or this U, however, this P, which is gate invariant, is already a sparse matrix, and can you select the, uh, uh, the localized orbitals based on the information from some columns of this P? This is entirely possible, and actually it only uses one line of the MATLAB code, the simplest version, to do it. If this is a gamma point calculation, you take your Psi coming out, of, for example, from the output of a quantum espresso, you do this weird operation called a pivoted QR. You do a Psi, you transpose that, you do a QR CP factorization, and the previous Q factor is guaranteed to be a good gauge. Uh, it is only one line of the code, but the proof is actually extends more than one line, and uh, you're interested, uh, you can read this paper. And it is very clearly very easy to code and to parallelize. It is deterministic, no initial gas output whatsoever. And uh, the permutation encodes the basic idea I talked about earlier, which encodes the selected columns of the density matrix implicitly. Uh, you can do this for the k-point, and uh, the strategy is that you find one anchor k-point, usually you choose it to be the gamma point, and you select the columns of the density matrix, but now you have actually more than one density matrix, so you cannot do just a one QR decomposition to have all the gauge, and you do a few extra steps involving the Lavdin orthogonalization procedure, and you will get the gauge for all the cases. And you might wonder whether this always works. So there's a no, although there is no direct the proof, but our experience so far is if your insulating system, uh, clearly uh, this is still for insulating system, if the insulating system is topologically trivial, it really doesn't matter which uh, point you choose, uh, mostly, uh, uh, most likely the case, but if it is topologically non-trivial anyway, this won't work. So, uh, so it is uh, quite, uh, 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 well, it, in practice it becomes actually easy. So this is some examples of uh, the SDM orbitals, the shape of that obtained from quantum espresso a couple of years ago uh, from the gamma point calculation. And you can see that this is the shape of the SP uh, hybridized uh, orbitals located on the bond, and this is the uh, localized orbitals local, uh, localizing on the oxygen. Pretty much agrees with the chemical intuition. Again, this is only for the valence band. And uh, this is more recent result with the K-point, and this is a system we obtained from Steve Lewis, former group member, uh, uh, Senior Sarko, and he was working on the so-called uh, chromium oxide example, which is kind of challenging because it's uh, <coughs> Uh, it's uh, being polarized, and you have the competition between the D orbitals and the P orbitals, so on and so forth. And you have to, if you directly run one year, uh, it really depends on the initial guess. Here is an example. If you already know the orbitals you're interested in, which is the DXY, DYZ, DXZ, you start from here. That is the initial spread is about the 70 angstrom square, and after 30 iterations, it converges. And if you start from a wrong guess, I'm just uh, throwing some random thing there. 
there. Let's say start from SP2. Of course, it's wrong, but the point is it should be robust. If you start from SP2 initial gas, you can see that it got stuck, and uh, it never uh, converges after, uh, even if you run it for a thousand iterations. And uh, if you do the SEDM, you can see that it's almost a flat line, but it's not exactly flat because SEDM is not guaranteed to minimize the spread of the one-year function, but almost in the sense that the initial spread from the SEDM that is run the one line uh, or two line of the code is already 17.22 after the fully converged one-year function is 16.98. So you're really almost there. And if you look at from there, it's just a flat line. Uh, and uh, okay, now uh, I ran very quickly through the case of the isolated band structure, but if you uh, have questions about that, I'll be more than happy to explain after the talk. Uh, the reason I rushed a bit because I want to talk about the entangled band. And uh, in the case of entangled band, if you look at the density matrix, there is no gap, which means that the density matrix as a projector along the energy spectrum is not a smooth function. But the decay of the one year function functions is directly connected to the smoothness of the underlying matrix function. And if you don't have smoothness, you don't have the decay. And therefore, for metallic system, directly do it. You don't have exponentially localized one-year function. The idea is very simple, which is you use a quasi-density matrix. You artificially construct something that does have the smoothness property. And how do you do it? You can see this F plays the role of occupation number. And this is not something that is very uh, uh, alien, because in Kongshan DFD calculations, you have a Fermi Dirac or Gaussian or this kind of things. You are smearing that anyway. However, you usually smear it to the extent of the physical temperature. That is about 100K, 300K, up to 1,000K, so on and so forth. But we're doing localization, which means that the energies we're looking at can span several Hartree, which means that here, in constructing the quasi-dense matrix, it's only a mathematical tool. And we can actually afford to use a smearing that is about several EV width. And what does it mean to have a several EV converting to KBT? That's like tens of thousands of K. You can have pretty decent decay due to this artificial smearing. That's exactly the idea, and as I'm, show, I'm showing you here, for the case of isolated band, this is the HOMO, this is the LUMO, you have a gap, and therefore, although the spectral projector look like a discontinuous function, but there's no difference between this function and something that is smoother in the gap. So, you effectively have something that is smooth. For the entangled case one, this is the obtained uh, 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 from uh, uh, the terminology from uh, uh, one of uh, Professor Mazari's paper in 2007. And for the entangled case one, you are interested in localizing both the valence band and also part of the conduction band. And therefore, you choose the smearing function to be like this. So it is, uh, you can have more than one way of doing this. And uh, one way is to use this of C function. It is uh, uh, given by two parameters. One's mu, where you roughly want to cut. And second is sigma, how large is the smearing. And these are the only two user parameters in the code. And uh, the entangled case two is, for example, you have a copper. And you want to disentangle the D electrons from the rest of the S and the P electrons. And therefore, you use a Gaussian-like function. Again, the shape of the function is not necessarily uh, very important important, uh, but uh, still, if you use a Gaussian, you are, have two parameters, one's mu and one's sigma, and you can tune this so that the resulting quasi density matrix is smooth along the energy direction. So this kind of idea, uh, has, uh, if you want to try this idea, there are a few ways to do it. And one is we first put it on the uh, a MATLAB code. And uh, recently, uh, it is on the version on Julia, but also with a version of formulation. Uh, and uh, OK, here is the hidden treasure that is I obtained from Ivan that his paper uh, apply, uh, appeared on archive this morning. And therefore, <laughs> you have the most up-to-date reference for this. and also thanks to uh, Dr. Vitali's work, and this is also now in the developer, at least in the developer branch of a one year 90. And uh, 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 as I said before, uh, how would you use this instead of having the begin projections uh, uh, block? Uh, for the isolated band, there's no parameter whatsoever. All you need to do is SEDM projection equals to true, and SEDM entanglement, I think this equals zero, means isolated band, and that's it. 
and uh, for the entangled band, you need to select this one or two and give the mu and the sigma parameters. You can see that it becomes a lot easier to tune than before, especially this mu. Usually, you can safely put it to be the Fermi surface. So. Uh, this is some examples. This is the band, structuring, uh, band structure intablation obtained solely by SCDM, uh, which is this uh, uh, one trick. Uh, and you can see that it interpolates the band very well. The, this is benchmarked with the result obtained from quantum espresso. This is for the case one, uh, for the full valence band and also part of the conduction band. And this is case two for the copper. You can see that it nicely selects out the d orbitals in the middle of the in the middle of the spectrum. And as I said, spread is not everything. Here I give you some uh, the first example, which is a quantitative. I'm using the 10 by 10 by 10 k points, and uh, you start from six bands, and you would like to uh, reduce this to four bands. Uh, and uh, we directly use the SEDM and don't do disentanglement. And what you see here is it is very nicely interpolated up to the Fermi surface. Is actually even above the Fermi surface is not that bad either. And the SDM orbitals, the average spread is 18 point, uh, sorry, the total spread was 18.38 angstrom square. And if you turn on the disentanglement of the wrong in a poor way, I'm not saying that one year couldn't do it this system. Clearly one year can do it. But if you only focus on the spread, you can get some orbitals has a significantly smaller spread, but the interpolation is just garbage. And this is to say that, I mean, you shouldn't, especially in the case of entangled band, you shouldn't only focus on the spread. And uh, yeah, especially smaller spread does ne not necessarily mean that you have a better interpolation. Now with the rest of the 10 minutes or something, uh, so I can talk about the recent thing that is the variational formulation for one-year functions for the entangled systems. And uh, as I said, just appeared yesterday. And uh, <coughs> Uh, the standard approach, if I understand it correctly, in this community is called the disentanglement procedure, proposed by Souza, Mazzari, and Vanderbilt in 2000, uh, sorry, 2001. And uh, uh, the basic idea is the following. Because uh, you have an entangled band, it is impossible you select uh, n orbitals and find n one-year functions, and uh, there's never going to be smooth, so it's not a, not a good idea. Uh, instead, you introduce something called the frozen orbitals, and which is denoted by PF. This PF is uh, just uh, some, let's say, within a certain energy window, you say your one-year functions should exactly reproduce all the states on, uh, in this energy window, at least for the k-points you have selected. And uh, the, uh, this condition is mathematically realized by the following constraint, that is the projector corresponding to the one-year functions projected to the frozen window should be the frozen window. So that's it for all the k-points in the Brooding Zoom. And uh, this is a subspace selection process with a frozen band constraint. And uh, in practice, you need to work uh, with the three numbers. One is an outer, that is how many states you have in your outer window. This you can conceptually take it to be infinity, but practically you often reduce it to a more uh, reasonable number. The second is the number of one-year functions you are interested in. And third is the number of frozen bands for each k-point. I mean, these are three necessary parameters. And you do need to work with more bands. Honestly speaking, at the beginning, when we tried to understand this disentanglement this procedure, thank you, we couldn't understand this uh, 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 very well uh, because we don't know, in a variational sense, what it is minimizing. We really don't know. And now we think we have a better understanding because we now know the reason why we don't know uh, why it is minimizing because it is not. It is actually is better uh, viewed as an uh, incomplete minimization problem towards minimizing something. Uh, and it doesn't mean that it's not a good algorithm. It's still very good. Uh, okay, so in order to enforce this constraint, and there are at least four equivalent ways, mathematically equivalent ways for enforcing the constraint. I don't have time to go through them, but uh, the, math, uh, the numerically most convenient one is this so-called XY representation. That is your gauge UK is given by this weird matrix. You have identity uh, reflecting the, uh, uh, the frozen band. You have a YK gauge in the block diagonal form and this yk is unitary multiplied by another unitary matrix, which is xk. And this part corresponds to the gauge invariant part, and this part corresponds to the gauge dependent part. 
So more specifically, if you when you look at the variational formulation, it looks like the following. It looks very much like the uh, Mazari Vanderbilt recipe. You still minimize the uh, spread, but instead of minimizing u, you minimize these two things independently, and you have the x and the y. This, I want to say this is a redundant representation, and uh, uh, which means uh, it is more difficult to minimize than the original problem. And, but you exactly put this on SARS in, and uh, you have the X and the Y to be unitary matrix, and that's it. You do minimize this. And uh, after the work, uh, we realized the, uh, I mean, we, uh, as you, when you write the introduction, you realize that this is equivalent, mathematically equivalent, to the so-called partly occupied one-year functions proposed by Thigerfen, Hans, and uh, Jacobson in 2005, but it is what it is. And uh, if you want to use this formulation, you, the preliminary version of the Julia code is available here. And uh, uh, the relation to the disentanglement procedure, as I said, is the following. In the disentanglement procedure, you split the functional into the gate invariant part and the gate dependent part. And you can do the so-called alternating minimization. You minimize the gate invariant part, minimize the gate dependent part, go back and forth, so on and so forth, and hopefully this will lead to a convergent algorithm. However, the actual implementation of the disentanglement procedure only does this in one step. You do the gate invariant, gauge independent, uh, sorry, gauge invariant, gauge dependent, then you are done. So it is actually a one-step realization of the alternating minimization for the uh, uh, variational problem, and therefore the sp total spread of the variational formulation is guaranteed to be no greater than the spread of the disentanglement procedure. So let me quickly run through a few examples. And one is the silicon system with uh, eight bands. And uh, uh, as you can uh, expect from chemical intuition, if you just have the valence band, the orbitals should look like the sp hybridized orbitals. But you have eight orbitals. They should really be the atom-centered, not bond-centered. It becomes the sp3 hybridized orbitals. So uh, you can see the variational formulation indeed has a slightly smaller spread. And, uh, all the three methods give excellent band interpolation. And uh, uh, another interesting thing to see is although the SCDM orbitals have a significantly larger spread, you don't see the difference at all from the band interpolation. And uh, a more interesting result can be seen if you resolve to the per orbital spread. You can see the all the eight orbitals obtained from the variational formulation have exactly the same spread. And if you look at the one year, they actually split into two groups, one the 3.16, one the 3.59. And uh, if you look, look at the shape of the functions, they look a little bit different. And this one looks more like the sp3 hybridized orbitals, which agrees more with the chemical intuition. I mean, I'm not saying that the variational formulation should be expected to restore the symmetry always, but at least uh, coincidentally, here it restores the symmetry. Another thing is SEDM does not recognize the symmetry. You can see that it is a split into the two groups, mostly related to valence and conduction, respectively. And uh, as I said in the abstract, uh, we have uh, actually a few other materials in the paper. Uh, you can read that, like uh, aluminum and copper and other things. But another very interesting thing is, uh, at least in the literature, we're not aware of the uh, report of the decay properties of this generalized one-year function for uniform electron gas. If you just uh, think about the uniform electron gas, if you do the uh, density, uh, the, the standard localization, you just have a one over R decay period. And and uh, if you do this generalize the one-year function, thanks to the variational formulation, we can ask a definitive question, uh, answer, uh, which, what is the decay property? And you can see that this thing definitely works. This is SCDM initialized uh, variational optimization. And you can see it exactly reproduces up to the cusp. And the second band, I don't constrain that, so it doesn't matter. And you can see the orbitals, they indeed decay. Uh, and uh, you can measure that very precisely, it decay like one over R squared. You might wonder at this point, why does this thing decay like one over R squared instead of exponential decay? This is precisely because the one-year function is minimizing the spread, or the second order moment, or mathematically speaking, the H1 norm in the Fourier space. What is H1 norm? It is only minimizing the first order derivative and doesn't care at all about the second order derivative. And the optimizer exactly respects the request. That is, you can see there's a kink. And therefore, this is really, you minimize something has exactly compact support and zero outside. And therefore, you have precisely a one over R squared decay. 
And very recently, there's a mathematical understanding uh, saying that if you do it correctly, you can actually at least get to super algebraic decay. We implemented the procedure. You can see that by relaxing, we don't minimize the spread, but ask the spread to be a little bit larger. This can be enhanced to super algebraic decay. And you can do this in 2D. You can see this very interesting effect of the, I mean, it's a non-trivial boundary shape due to the uh, uh, enforcement of the, uh, uh, of the constraint due to the uh, frozen band constraint. I don't have time to talk into that, but you still have the one over R squared decay if you minimize the spread. So uh, let me conclude. And uh, uh, so one year functions uh, localization now we think can be robustly initialized, for example, with the SEDM. And uh, you can use it for high, hopefully, it will be useful for high throughput materials calculation. You can do this, uh, do the variational optimization even for entangled band. Uh, spread is not everything. Hopefully, this is a take home message. And uh, at first, I put some future directions like a symmetry rest restoration, topological materials. But I heard just yesterday during the poster session, Dr. Vital has already made very promising progress along this direction. Hopefully, we'll see that happen in the near future. Thank you very much.